Hey guys, it's lovely to have you back right here on my Crafters Companion YouTube channel. I hope you are all well and you're ready for another tutorial. With this one, what we're going to do is we're really going to focus the main item, the main topper is going to be something brand new from Crafters Companion. But, and I say brand new, brand new as of when I am uh, posting this tutorial, but then we're going to start to include some cardstock and dies that are from a good couple of years old. So just bringing in the old and the new together, which I love to do. What we're also going to be doing is we're going to be using our 6x6 card blanks. So the ones that we've got that are the green and the red, we've got the ivory as well. But what we're going to do, if like me, you're someone that predominantly uses white card blanks and you may get to a point where you're going to be left over or left with coloured card blanks that you won't use as card blanks, then of course, uh, why not just cut them up and use them for mats and layers? Now, of course, I would be using mine for demos when it comes to the shows that we do. But just to show you that if you do have your card blanks left over, then you can just use them for mats and layers. And then you're going to have lovely, bright and colourful envelopes that you can use elsewhere when it comes to your crafting so before then thank you so much to everyone that still of course subscribes to my crafters companion youtube channel it really is appreciated for those that then uh, comment and also give me the thumbs up after they've watched that's also appreciated and then although it's not necessary but it is also appreciated and that is those that hit that bell notification when it comes to the uh my uh, youtube page so then every time I pop up a tutorial, then you guys get an alert just to say that there is one ready for you to watch. So for all of those aspects, thank you very, very much. But let's dive straight in, because as I said, we're going to be focusing, looking at something new that I uh, am saying new. It is, of course, dependent on when you are watching this tutorial. Now, we're going to be having a look at the Happy New Deer. So this is our cute character Christmas stamps for 2024. We've got the full range. What I'm going to do is I'm going to link them within the description of the YouTube tutorial. Then uh, you can have a look across on our Crafters Companion website. But what you can see here, this one being, of course, Happy New Deer. This is what we're going to be using. We're going to be colouring with our tri-blend. So it's not often that I tend to do a lot of colouring, although I did do it within the last one, which was the penny slider. But we are going to do a fair bit of colouring when it comes to this full image. I thought what we'll do as well, instead of using alcohol ink pad, why not do a little bit of black embossing powder and uh, start to colour in. Now, that is the, well, the new aspect so to speak. Also then, of course, while we're sticking with the new, we've got our card blanks. So we've got a full range of them. I'm going to be using the actual ivory one as my card blank because what I am going to do is I'm going to do an easel card, which is not something you see me do a lot. And then we're going to be using the green and the red for mats and layers. So I've got them. Uh, I've got my, I've got my Nina cardstock. I've also got some brown twine that we're going to be using. I've got some gold, no I don't, I've got some black embossing powder. I've got my translucent clear ink pad, which is just that one there, but I've taken this one out of my craft kit that I had spare. So I'm going to be using that one. And then really going old school, um, Win is that Winter's Tale from, so this is an old Sarah's Signature Christmas collection from even just before my time. So I've been at Crafters Companion six and a half years. So it's going to be over seven years old, A Winter's Tale. I absolutely love this paper pad. Whenever I get the chance to get my hands on it, I will uh, grab it. So if you've got this one, then of course you can be using that like I'm going to be doing as well. So let's just take, I'm going to use that one. So seeing as I see it straight away, let's take it out. And then the other bits that we're going to be using for embellishing, I've got here some leftover red berries, which were from a couple of years ago, which was our winter flower forming range. I'm going to use them. And then I'm also going to be using seasonal foliage elements. And this one was from our Tis the Season the other year. So we're going to be using these. That's everything that we're going to be using to create our easel card. So I'm going to move these ones out the way just now. We'll get started with our 
embossing in color in just in a moment, but let's create the actual card blank, that easel card blank. We're going to do it six by six, so it really, really is simple. So we're going to need two sheets or two uh, six by six card blanks that we've got from the range, the, the range of card blanks, I mean, not the range of the store in the UK. And I'm going to cut it in half, so it's going to be six by six. So I've got my six by six card front and then what I've also got is I've got my six by six card blank. Now what I'm going to do is right across the middle, let's score it at three inches. I'm just going to use my guillotine, score it at three inches. We're going to fold that one over and then all we need to do is pop our glue onto there and then there we go, we've got our easel card. Really, really simple to create when it comes to your six by six. So let's take our adhesive and let's just create our card blank straight away. I'm just gonna add my tape, top, bottom, and then the sides. Of course you use your adhesive of choice and then a bit in the middle as well. I've got my juice and I've got my cup of tea at the side of me because it's getting a bit late here in the UK when I'm filming this. Still light, but it's starting to get dark. I've got my, my cup of tea. And then we're going to go back and then we're going to align that one over like so. So it's exactly where it is. If you hear a little noise, by the way, I've also got a fan on just to the side of me. So if you hear a little fan noise, that's what it is. And then there we go. We've got our easel card ready to start to decorate. So I'm going to move that out the way. Let's bring in our Nina cardstock. And then I'm going to go in with my stamping platform here. Let's bring in my stamping platform. Now I'm going to, let's do, let's cut this to four, let's go for four by four. So four by four, that should be. Yeah, that'll be fine. Plenty of room to pop our stamp. We're going to use one of the sentiments as well. So let's do Christmas cheer to a friend so dear. So how thick is that stamp? It's roughly about three quarters of an inch. So let's, I'm going to cut a strip that is an inch thick. Yeah, that'll be fine. And then I'll make it shorter later when I come to actually stamp it. So I'm going to move that out of the way. Let's take my stamp and let's take our reindeer. Now let's bring in our card once again. And we're going to use our tri-blend. So that's why I've gone for my Nina card stock. And we can pop our reindeer within the middle there. Spot on. So let's press that in and let's take an anti-static bag. So take our anti-static bag. I need to plug in my uh, heat tool. So bear with me while I plug this in. So we're good to go, which we are now. Heat tool at the ready, and I've also got my black embossing powder. Taken a piece of copier paper, printed paper, and let's just fold it in half so we're all at the ready. And then let's take our watermark ink pad. Now, as I said at the start, I'm just using mine that came with one of the craft clubs because I had a, a couple spare. So I'm trying to use them up. If you don't have this smaller one, then of course the normal 
larger oval one is exactly the same. So I want to make sure that I've got really, really nice coverage and then turn that one around and let's press that in. So give it a nice press, firm press all the way around, making sure we don't miss anything. And then, well, look at that. It was dirty. My stamp was dirty. So I can clearly see that it's been, um, the impression's gone through absolutely fine. Just as well, we're using a black embossing powder. Goes to show that I hadn't actually cleaned that stamp like I thought I had after the last time I used it. So let's go in with our black embossing powder. And then let's sprinkle a little bit more. And then here we go. I'm going to set that out of the way for now. I'm just going to heat set this now and then we'll do the sentiment. So I'm going to get this to temperature. And let me zoom in a little bit. And I'm going to start at this top corner and then work my way down. And as it melts, I'm going to then just bring my heat gun down. So I'm not wafting it. I'm just keeping it still, letting it melt, and then moving. So let that move and travel. As soon as it melts, move in like so. Melt as we go. Moving your fingers. Powder melts. Let's work to the edge. And I'm just going to make sure it's nicely melted, which it should be. And then I'll maybe see a little bit of a shine. Let me, I'm just going to talk about another angle here. So let's see if you can see that now. There's a light little shine to it, or it, well there is, but for you to see, it's a light little, there you go, there you are, so that's perfectly melted now. So set that to the side for a moment, and then what we can do is, let's do that again, but with the sentiment. that into there. Let's bring my sentiment strip that we've got. I'm just going to get, make sure that that's lined in the middle. Let's take, oh, I think, we've got to go that way just now. Let's take our sentiment and then if we bring in a sentiment, And let's go into here. And then let's move our reindeer out of the way. I shall clean that later on. I'll definitely need to clean it because it's got the watermark ink pad on it. So let's flatten that. And before I forget, let's anti-static bag. By, certainly when it comes to the reindeer, by doing the heat embossing, it gives you kind of like bumper bars, so to speak, that I like to call it. Bumper bars to colour in. So let's tap that over. And then 
Let's level that out. Press that down. Like so. And again, because it's still dirty, I can see exactly where it is. I'm just going to move that out the way for now. As I say, we shall clean that later. So let's bring in our black embossing powder. Let's bring in our scrap again. And then our powder. And then any little bits that are missing, let's just go over. Like so. Christmas cheer to a friend so dear. Cute. It could be a young friend, it could be an older friend, a relative. At least that can cover so, so many. And then we'll do the same again. I'm going to start at the left hand side and then as it melts, I'm going to move towards the right hand side. So let it do its thing. Melt away. Not something that I do loads is heat embossing, but it's really nice. It's very therapeutic. I find it very therapeutic. So it's... There we go. That is. No, I think that's still glitching, is it? Yes, it is. Right, so we'll go back to the overhead so you can just see it. But we've got Christmas cheer to a dear, to a friend so dear. Right, so colouring. Let's move that out the way and let's bring in our reindeer. So I'm going to use gold yellow blend, earth brown blend, Earth Brown Shades. We're going to use Dark Red Blend, Dark Red Shades, Dull Green Blend. We're going to be using Purple, Brown Grey Blend, Ice Grey Blend, Pale Pink Shades and Pale Pink Blend. These are all the tri-blends that we're going to be using. So let's start with the Let's start with the brown blend and the browned shades. Now, when it comes to the shades, I'm only going to be using the deep tone of EB7. But let's go in with the blend here. Let's start around his face. So starting with that light tone, and I'm just going to colour in all the way edge to edge making sure that we've got a really really nice coverage and then i'm going to go into that darker tone and this one i'm going to come down the left hand side and then along the base into here it's going to be about two thirds of the way in and then we're going into the mid-tone. And we're going to come along about two-thirds of the way in. And then back to the light tone. And we're just going to re-finish that off. So you can see that little bit of darkness that you're getting. But if we come to the shades now, so EB567. So I want to go to the darkest. I want to go to 7. And all that I'm doing is to that left-hand side ever so lightly... I'm just coming under, even just under the eyebrows there, just to elevate it that little bit more. That just makes all the difference. It's tiny, but a difference that it makes. And we're going to repeat that step for each bit that's going to be brown. So let's go around his ears. Because they're small, I'm just going to do both at the same time, like that. 
And then we're going to go into the dark. Add that in. Work that in. Into the mid. Blend that dark. And finish off with the light again into here. And then back to the EV7. I'm just going to add a little bit to the base. A little bit just around as well, just to elevate it that little bit more. And then what else is going to be brown? So his arms and his legs. Let's colour that in brown to here and then we're going to go into the dark so we're going to go dark underneath down the sides dark underneath down the sides blend that in blend that in and then back into the light to finish off back into the EB7 and just underneath, down, just underneath, under a scarf and down, creating, I mean, look at that. It does make that a little bit of a difference, quite a big bit of a difference. And that's really all that's gonna be brown. I don't think I've missed anything. Not that I can think of it anyway, but at least I've still got my pens at the side. Should have changed my mind. Let's go in with the gold yellow blend. And let's go around his outer nose. So the light tone first. Into the dark tone. And I'm going to come down into here, down into here, blend that out, blend that out, and then blend that out. You can see that really shows off the blend, doesn't it? Then we're going to go into his paws or his claws or claws not his claws his hoofs his hoofs that's what I was trying to think so lay down the light tone and then that dark tone I'm going to come along there and then along there let's go up into there and then the same but mirror image so along into there Going in with the mid-tone, blend, 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 and then blend out. Now, in all honesty, I would spend a little bit more time than I am, but because I'm wanting to colour all this from scratch and construct the whole card, that's why I'm going a little bit quicker than normal. But it still shows you, even if you do go a bit quick or quicker, it's the joy of the tri blends and the Nina cardstock works a treat, and you can get a really lovely blend. Blend that out. And then let's do the soles of his feet get a really good blend you want to get a nice base of the light tone of the ink in there as well and I know usually I'll always say do sections at a time and I do but if it's smaller areas, then I'll maybe do a couple at a time. So 
So let's blend that out and that out. Blend that out. And then back to the light and blend that one. And then that one. Yeah, we're going really coming together. They really are so, so easy, but such a joy to actually colour in. They really are. Let's go, let's go in with this nose. So we're going to go in with that light tone. And the light red. Then we're going to go in with the dark. In with the mid, back in with the light. Now you can see that build up of depth, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the dark red shades. I'm going to go to the darkest one, which is seven. And what I've done with the brown, I'm doing again with the red and just a really light little circular motion to create extra drama. Then sticking with the red, let's go in with the hearts. Let's also do the berries while we're here. So the heart, let's go with the dark tone to the right hand side, dark tone to the left hand side. Blend that out. Blend that out into the light. Blend, blend. I'm going to go back to DR7 and around and around. And that is going to be our reds. Happy with that. Happy with that. I have just noticed though. Where is my gold yellow blend? Just infill there and there. That's it. Then we're going to go in with the scarf. So let's go in with the scarf and let's do the pale pink blend. Now, when it comes to these dots, these are going to be a dark purple. So I'm just going to color all the way over with the light. Then let's go in with the dark and then blend out. And then I'm going to go in with the darkest tone of the shades, which is number six. And then I'm just going to come all the way down like so. You can as well because you can use them all to shade together so if i go back to the darkest tone of the blend which is number three i can blend that out so though we say we've got three shades to blend with we've really got six shades to blend it with when you bring in the shade set so blend that one out and then for the polka dots we are going to go in with the purple. I'm just going to go into the dark tone of the purple and just do dot, 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 infill. And then let's go to the light pink. Fill that in. And then back to the dark, oh sorry, light purple and now into the dark purple Blend that out. Back to the light and blend that out. Still trying to keep all my pens in any order. And oh, we need to go back to the pale pink. So the pale pink is going to go into that light tone and infill. I'm not doing any blend, just infilling that 
with the light pale pink. Then we need to do the holly. So dull green blend. Colour in. Into the dark. Add that and that. And then blend that and that. And then back with the light. Blend, blend, and then blend. Let's then take the brown grey blend. So I only want the light tone of the brown grey blend. And I'm just going to kind of sketch in with his antlers. And that's it. That's all that I'm doing. Just sketching in his antlers. Nothing more. Which works. And then I'm going to go. I think my ice grey too is, it is. It's starting to run dry. So let me just take my ice grey two of my illustrator and do what I usually do. And that is work my way round. And because you've got the black emboss, that's where you've got those helping aid as a bumper bar to colour in and then draw around. So following all of the black lines. Work your way round. But what I want to do as well, it's a reindeer looks like he's sitting in midair. He's floating in midair. So I'll take our art liner if I can find it offhand. And there we go. I'm also going to take a white gel pen and then my art liner. So my art liner, all I'm going to do is take a couple of wiggly lines and I'm doing it parallel along the base, just so it's like he's a, as if he's actually sitting on something. What can even do like so. And then my white gel pen which is here, just to add a little bit extra detail. So in the little berries, little dots, and then little wispy lines as well. So in the ear, around the ear, and then in the nose, just going to do a little bit above the eye. I can then come along just over his mouth. I'm going to do the little dots in the polka dot scarf. I'm going to go in here and then I can go around the love heart. A few wispy lines within his legs. Along here as well. And then I think let's do, actually let's do a couple of wispy lines here. The difference that that makes a white gel pen. It really is fab. Always worthwhile having a gel pen, white gel pen, if you've not already got one. And considering I semi sped through that, really, really happy with how that looks. I was still, I think we're not too bad, are we? There we go. Coming a bit closer. There. So we've got our colouring done. So that was all the colours that I used a moment ago. Of the tried lens. So before we put, actually, before we put the ice grey pen away. Let's do the same. So we're just going to go around. 
You've seen me do this a million times. Ice Grey 2. Whether it's Tri-Blend, Classic, Illustrator. It's usually my go-to. I'll sometimes go a little bit darker. I think in the last tutorial with the Penny Slider, I think I've done Ice Grey 4, if I remember correctly. all the way round like so and then that is our sentiment and our stamped image done ready to go so let's bring in our pattern paper so let's move that one out the way and let's bring in our guillotine. So the card front is six. It's got is six by six. So if I do if I try so if I do five let's do five and a quarter by five and a quarter like so. And then what we'll also need is we'll need a stop a bumper to stop the easel. So if I do it so it's six inch by three, yeah. Yeah, six, let's do six inch by three. What was that? Yeah. So let's do six by three. I can always make it a little bit shorter when we actually come to assemble. So let's go in with our, let's do red and then green. So if that was five and a quarter, let's do five and a half by five and a half. And then let's take our green and do five and three quarters by five and three quarters. So that's going to give us a perfect quarter of an inch matting layer for the front. He can go onto there. So, yeah. So if that's four, four by four, let's bring in our, let's go in with the green first this time. So here, I've gone pattern paper, red, and then green. Whereas on this one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in with stamped image, green, and red. So we're going to flip it. I don't want it to be quite a quarter of an inch bigger. So I'm going to come down just a little bit shy of four and a quarter by four and a quarter. Yeah, that'll be fine. And then the red, let's do in between four and a quarter and four and a half. So that should give us, oh no, oh no, I'm right enough. Yeah, there we go. So if I bring that back into here. This is a rock. Do you know what I think? I'm gonna I'm gonna bring in my edge crimpler and distress this outer edge. So that can go into there, that can go into there. Yep. Nice framework. I'm gonna use my twine down that side and we'll do some of the foliage on that bit. Yep. Yes, like that, like that. Right. So Another one of the red car blanks. So my matte and layer, I'm going to keep it six inch, but I'm going to go a little bit thicker. So if that was three, let's go th three and a quarter. Yep. And then our green, we're going to keep it six. I don't want to go quite three and a half. I'm going to come down a little bit shy of three and a half. So I've got a small 
red layer. So I've got no matting layer at the left and right. It's just top and bottom. And that's going to be the stopper. Yeah, happy with that. And then our sentiment. What I'm going to do is this raised edge here of the finger guard, I'm going to run that parallel towards the edge of my sentiment and then cut. And then I'm going to twist it around and do exactly the same again and cut. So I've then got the same distance left and right. And then this is where I find it easier for myself. What I'm going to do is I'm going to stick it onto the red, then the green, and then trim all the way around. So let's move that out the way. Right, let's do all these layers. Because I've got quite a lot of layers, what I'm going to do is let's use my tacky glue instead of my tissue tape. So let's pop that on into there while I take another drink. Let's line that and press that. And then move that out of the way and let's trim till I've got kind of the same border width twist that one around and then cut yeah that's fine add our glue this will also go on foam pad, so this can act as additional stopper for your easel. So you'll have two options. A little bit of a thinner layer for the green. Twist that round. Go, so just trim that a little bit more and let's trim that edge. Yeah, happy with that one. So that's our sentiment. Right, so let's move that out the way and let's pop this together and we're going to wrap some. Uh, actually, will I? Yes, I'm going to wrap some twine around this as well. Some of the brown twine. So, making this exactly as I had in my head. So, I've not really deviated away from what I was thinking, which usually I do. Although there's still plenty of time to come. Let's press that in. I'm just going to neaten up each edge first. Just neaten that and neaten that. And what we'll do is let's mat and layer this just now as well because we can do the twine at the same time. Oh, that rhymes. Twine at the same time and it rhymes so let's add that I'm wondering as well if we've got how cool this would look if we've got Sheena's invisible ink pad imagine stamping with the invisible ink pad then colour in and then heating up the line to disappear. That'd be really quite cool. Right, press that in. Now I'm going to go to my tape for now. So I'm going to add that and that. That 
and that and then top and bottom so let's add tape there and then there so let's bring in the twine and then I'm going to take the backings off here I've got lots of twine so if I'm lacking in space or lacking in twine what I'll do is I'll wrap it around cut and then do it again cut and do it again but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep wrapping around because I've got plenty so wrap around I like to cross over come into the middle and then through like that also helps keep it all secure and then I like to put extra tape there extra tape there and then what I also like to do is just put a layer of glue at each bit so once that's dry that's going to soak into the twine and it ain't going anywhere so that's going to be along the bottom and then let's do the same for the left hand side here so let's take the backing off there I'm going to start into there and then down. Don't want to cross too much into the reindeer round and then through. Let's press all that in. Just dropped my Reel of twine. So let's add our tape. Tape. And then do as I've done before. Just add some glue. You could always use your glue gel or your silicon that I like to use, either or. There we go, keep it secure. This bit we're going to fill. With some of the foliage so set that out the way and then let's br oh i was going to distress that wasn't i so let's come round the edge where they're distressing to i seem to be doing this a lot lately correct me if i'm wrong but i think i may have done it with that craft box, the last video, the um, penny sliders, yeah, I'm sure I did, didn't I? So rough up the edge, like so and don't be scared to be too rough. Because what it'll do is because you're shredding it, you're going to get a nice rough white edge, which is going to work against the it was red, wasn't it first red matting layer. But alternatively, you could use some gold embossing powder around the edge, stay sticky glue in your gilding flakes if you wanted to. So you got options. So let's come in with our red layer and then we're going around not right to the edge because I don't want to flatten that whole edge I want to keep it rustic right here and press that in I have to say, although in the last few tutorials I've been using my double-sided tape, 
really, I've been using glue a lot more. I might be becoming a... I always... Tacky glue's always been my favourite, or wet glue's always been my favourite wet adhesive. But when I'm at home, as you guys know, I tend to use my double-sided tape a lot. But lately, I have been using the glue a lot more. So that's going to then position nicely into the middle. So let's go in with this layer first that we can pop into place. Oh, where's my foam pads? Let me get some, some more uh, foam pads. You got me as I am, all in blue this evening. All in blue. So I've got, this is just strips, which is fine. And then let's go around the edges, even although it'll add a little bit of bulk. But let's press some in as well. Some in there. And then let's pop a couple there. And that's going to bug me. So, making sure we've got a nice coverage. Don't go stingy on your foam pads, you know what I'm like. You want to make sure that the base, the platform's not going to bend or buckle. So then let's bring this down into here. So I don't want to go right to the bottom. Maybe come up, maybe a quarter of an, not even a quarter of an inch actually. Like so. Press all that down. So that can be one stopper. You can see here, that will be one stopper. But then we want to have an option with another one. So let's take that one. And that one. And that one. I'm going, the reason I'm going up and down the way is so that these will cross over onto the twine. So instead of it flowing that way along with the twine, it can sometimes stop it from sticking. What will happen is it's going to cross over. It's also going to secure them. But what I am going to do as well is add some tacky glue. That'll dry all the way through the twine. Get that lined up in as central as you can. Which is here. And then once you're happy, press that down. Like so. I'm just going to let that grab. Because you've got that glue, that wet glue. It's not as if the foam pads will connect straight away. There we go. And then let's go in with our top layer. Glue all the way around. Now whether it sticks to his glue or whether it's our collal tacky glue, you don't need much at all. So let's put that on and then let's bring our topper again. I'm going to press them across. I know I'm going into my glue, but the glue will dry not only into the card through the twine, but also into my foam pads. So it'll make it nice and triply secure. them off like 
so. And then that. Really liking how this is starting to look. Really, really liking it. So we've got one stopper. Let me just make sure that's nicely burnished. So we've got one stopper here that you can see. If I bring that back a little bit there, or if you want, you can go there. Up to you, you've got choices. Let's bring that back. I'm just going to then flatten that again for now. And then let's move that out the way. Let's bring in our dies. Bring in our berries. So I'm, if I do one for the sentiment and two for the topper. What have I got? I've got enough just. So there's one for the sentiment and then these two will work for the topper. Just keep them together. Let's move that out the way and then let's bring in my mini. Let's use the mini now. Let's bring in a little bit of cream. I'm not wanting too much cream or ivory, just a little bit. And then let's bring in some, don't need red, just need green. Now these are, I use these so, so much, so they're all going to be in bits. Let's take that one. Let's take that one I like to use, that one I like to use, and that one I like to use. So let's just pop them all on and cut. So green. So these can all be green and that can be green, that one and then that one. Let's put that on our folder and run it through. Probably do that maybe about three times. There's that one, and then there's that one. Just have a nice selection. I want most of them to be green. You want to bring in some craft in that, that would look nice. Maybe some red, that would look nice as well. But I'm just going to keep it all green. with a couple of ivory. So there's that. Remember, these are our card blanks that I'm using to mat and layer, because you don't have to just use them for card blanks. You know me, I use a lot Predominantly, most of my card blanks that I use are white. I, I prefer white. Even at special time of the year, I still prefer white. So if you feel like you're going to have, have them left over, why not use them for all your mats and layers? I know you'll have your envelopes left, but then you can use your envelopes for little envelope wallets, gift wallets if you want to envelope journals, there's lots of things that you can do with envelopes on their own. So 
let's pop these bits out into here. And then I'll do the holly. I think I'll do the holly another twice. So I'll do all of these in ivory as well. Apart from the holly. And then I'll do the holly another twice in green. There's that. And then there's that. Let's do Holly. So this set I use so much every single year. It's from the Tis the Season. I just find it. I think the look of the foliage, the size of it all. It just works a treat. So then let's take the ivory. So I don't need the holly. But I do need... Let's just do one of each with the ivory. So let's pop all of these on. Into here. Because the ivory I'm really only wanting is little backdrop tuck-in details. Through. Let's move that out the way, move all that out the way, and then let's pop. You can tell I use these dies so much that I just leave the double sided tape on, and I don't even stick them back on their original sheet, I just literally dump them in the packaging as I'm away to do right now. So if I bring them... I think that the stick's worn off anyway when it comes to that card back in. And because I keep all my dies in the original packaging with the top in place, as long as I don't tip them upside down then they're not going to fall out. Right, glue gel. I'm going to use my silicon for this. Now my top has dried up. So what does Craig do when it dries up? He just creates. I've gone right through both sides. Oh, well, not tomorrow, but I just pierce a hole. So Holly, I'm definitely going to need three for the top. So if we leave that one for the sentiment, let's do that enough for the sentiment. So if I do these three for the sentiment, probably won't need all these for the top are, but, and then I need my one berry here. Right, so I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna put a nice blob into here. Because I don't want to put glue gel on each individual die cut. You can, but I don't tend to. You've seen me doing it in the past. I tend to tuck. So, let's go and start backwards. So, I'm going to go with my holly berry. So start with my holly berry and then let's go holly and then let's go holly and then let's go holly like that and then let's just start to also tuck in. I'm going to tuck in there, tuck in, because we've still got plenty of glue gel, 
it means then that we can just slot these in. Slot that one in. Slot that in. And then let's also slot that one in. And then let's take that in to there and then slot in let's take actually no let's take that one out and then let's pop that one in and push in because it's a glue gel you've got wiggle room you've got maneuverability so we can then just pull so this sort of thing I would never attempt to do like the foam pads or hot glue. This is where I'll always use my glue gel or silicon in my case. So I can move and wiggle it about. Go in there. With a little touch of ivory. Same. Into there. The thing is, once it's completely dry, then you can really start to come along and manhandle all the layers, really start to fluff them up, bend them up, twist them, manipulate them. And then just have good old fun with them. Let's add that one into there. And then let's also add all of which I've used the glue gel that's already underneath or the silicon that's already underneath I've not added any more just moving that because I don't want to cover of course Rudolph's face but there we go kind of like our foliage sp spray that we've got with a little berry in the middle and then to finish off, well not finish off, but to also let's bring in our double berry here. So let's do the double berry and then let's also go in. In. and then let's add our holly leaf into there so we'll add one more bit there we go and there we are so let's twist and again once that's fully dry what I would then do is come along and then twist it manipulate it and really create shape to it but the last thing that I want to do let's bring in some of our pearls now I've got an old kind of crystal art tray which I've got kind of like the ridges in them which helps so give that a shake to flatten them out and then let's go in with so kind of act as though it's like snowdrops so let's do one two three four five six seven let's do one there and then I'll just do one there let's pick up my pickup tool pop that on there and then let's pop our teeny tiny little pearls into place as if they're like little snowflakes, little snowdrops. 
And then that, I am more than happy with. I have gone with my original and initial thought within my head. So if I then bring that in there, so it will need a, an envelope box or a box for it to go in. But you've got your easel card with your dear friend character stamp. Use the tribe lens to colour in and just created that really big foliage spray down the side there. Christmas cheer to a friend so dear. There we go. And Winter's Tale, that was the 12 by 12 paper pad that we used. And then the um, red and the green was from our 6 by 6 card blanks that was just chopped up. And that was about it. Black heat embossing. And that's it done. Thank you so, so much. I hope you enjoyed that one. A little bit more to that one. Done a lot of uh, colouring as well as creating that spray of course with the foliage dye so uh, where possible I'll list what I can within the descriptions some of the things of course we just don't do anymore like the winter's tail and I think probably the foliage dyes as well but we've got ranges from this year last year with foliage dyes we always have ones that we always just go back to and that is one set that I always go back to uh, as I said, thank you so, so much for tuning in on my Crafters Companion YouTube channel. If you do or did like that one, do please, of course, give me a thumbs up. And you're always welcome to share my YouTube channel to your friends, into groups, whatever it is. It is most appreciated. If not, it's just appreciated having you watch them. Right, okie doke. Till the next time, we'll see you again. Doodles.